Today's screencast is all about Muddy's points concerning the unit cell. Below we have some direct quotes from students. Uh, all of them are referring to how to find the properties or the calculations or the very last activity. And the last activity that this person is referring to is finding all of the values such as, you know, the atomic packing factor, the coordination number, and everything like that for a face-centered cubic unit cell. So, in order to address all of these muddy points at once, I'm going to redo this last activity so that we can have a demonstration of how to solve these problems. So, if there is a particular calculation that you want to see, there is a whole bunch of hyperlinks down here. So, let's go. So, this is the activity that the person was referring to. It is finding the features of the FCC unit cell. We are expected to find all of the things in this box. So the first thing is finding the number of atoms per unit cell and in order to do that we need to count the number of atoms from the faces and the number of atoms from the corners. So in order to help us do this we have a visual aid. We have here a FCC unit cell what it would look like if it was in three dimensions as a visual aid. So let's count. So from the corners we have, let's count the corners, we have one corner, two corners, three corners, four corners, five corner, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight total corners. Now on each of those eight corners, we have one eighth of an atom. Now let's look at the faces. On the faces, let's count the faces first. We have one face on top, one face on bottom, one in the front, one in the back, one on each side. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. Total of six faces. Then we know that on each of those faces we have one half of a full atom. So doing the math, we know that there's one atom from the corners and three atoms from the faces, meaning that total in the unit cell we have four atoms in the unit cell. So our next problems are related. We are asked the at what direction the atoms touch on and the number of atomic radii along that direction where they touch. So again, to help us out, we have our little companion cube. It, um, so let's just look at it. We can tell that the atoms definitely don't touch across the edges, so that way. We can also tell that this one's kind of a little bit obvious. Yes, they definitely touch across the face diagonal. See, we can definitely see the atoms touching right there. And just for, just to be certain that our answer is correct, no, the atoms do not touch along our body diagonal, which would be off from, if we were to chop this cube from the opposite corners like this, so to make like a rectangle kind of thing and they do not touch that way. Actually, the body diagonal would look something something like this if it was this way. If, like something, something like this. Something like that. We have determined that the atoms touch along the face diagonal. So now we gotta count the number of atomic radii on the face diagonal. So, you know, this would be one radii, this would be two to the center, three to the other edge, and then four. So there's four atomic radii on the face diagonal for a face center cubic. Our next task is to determine the cube edge, or A, in terms of R. The cube edge would be in this picture, this guy over here, but I have a better picture that will help us understand. So this is a picture of the face, so we're looking at a face of the cube. So we have here A that we're looking for, a, and again, because this is a cube, we know that both sides are the same, and so we're looking for this one, but we already know from the last problem that this right here, this length from here to there, is 4r. So we can use trig, because we know that this is a right angle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for a. So we know that a squared plus a squared is equal to the quantity 4r squared. So. Let's keep going. 2a squared equals 16r squared, so dividing by 2 on both sides. So a squared equals 8r squared. Now we take the square root of both sides. a 
equals square root of 8 r squared. I'm using the positive one because it's, we're talking about a length here, so it's not going to be negative. Now we can solve it further. a equals square root of 8 times r. And then finally, we, we can say that a equals 2 square root 2 times r, because it's, you know, 4 times 2. Yes, so we can say that. So a in terms of r is 2 square root 2 times r. The next two calculations we are asked for are the face diagonal and the body diagonal. Now we already know the face diagonal. We use this answer right here, the, that there are four radii along a face diagonal to say that the face diagonal in terms of r would be 4r for a face centered cubic. The body diagonal is a little bit more challenging to find, but here I have a diagram that will help us. So here is the side of the cube. Remember that's A, that we've, we've been calling it A. And then this is this line right here from this corner, that corner, that is D, the body diagonal. And here we have the face diagonal, and remember we have that as 4r. So from here to there, that's 4r. The other thing is we know that this is a right angle, and we also know a in terms of r from the previous calculation. So a in terms of r, so a equals the square root of 8 times r and I wrote it this way to make our calculations later a little bit easier. So we use the Pythagorean theorem again. So a squared plus 4r quantity squared equals d squared. And again, substitute that in. So we've got square root of 8r squared plus 4r quantity squared equals d squared. Now go do the math. We've got 8r squared is plus 16 r squared is equal to d squared, add them together, 24 r squared is equal to d squared, take the square root of both sides, yes I know, it's fun, so we've got the square root of 24 times r is equal to d, now we can take out the square root of 4, right, so it could be 2 square root 6 r is equal to D. So there we have the body diagonal in terms of R. Our next task is to determine the cube volume in terms of the radius. So let's look at a cube so we can figure this out. We know that previously we've been saying our cube edges were A. So we have A there, we have A here too, and we also have A for our depth. So we can see, because it's a cube, that our volume in terms of A would be A cubed. Length times width times height. Okay, so now from our previous problems, we know that A is equal to the square root of 8, or 2 radical 2, times R, right? So now we can substitute that into to there, so we know this. So now we can say that the volume in terms of r would be a, which is the equal to the square root of 8 times r cubed. Now we can do the math and make this a little bit simpler. So we can say that the volume is equal to the square root of 8 times the square root of 8 times the square root of 8, which would be 8 square root 8 times r cubed. Then going further, we can say that that 8 can change to 2 square root 2, which makes it 16 square root 2 times r cubed. So there we have the volume in terms of our radius. Now, if you didn't reduce it like so, it's still mathematically correct, so don't worry about that. In fact, this would be simpler, and I'm sure that would be accepted on a test if you were tested on this. Our last really mathematical task is to discover the atomic packing factor. Now the atomic packing factor is the volume of atoms divided by the volume of the unit cell. So we're going to use a lot of these answers that we've come up with before to find this atomic packing factor. So as I stated previously, the atomic packing factor, atomic packing factor, is equal to the volume of the atoms divided by the volume of the cube or the unit cell. So for the atoms, we've been modeling them as spheres. So the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds times 
pi r cubed. So, but we we need to know how many atoms that we have in the cube, whole atoms in the cube. So we have, from this answer over here, we have four. So now we need to multiply that by four to represent the four atoms in the cube. So that's the total volume of the atoms in our unit cell. So now we divide that by the volume of the cube. So going back to our previous answers, we have the volume of the cube over here written as 16 times the square root of 2 times r cubed. So we're using that answer, so they're both in terms of r. 16 square root 2 times r cubed. So that's that's mathematically it right there, but we can simplify this further. So the r's, they will cancel out, and we are left with 4 times 4, which is 16 over 3 times pi over 1, right, because it's on the top, times 1 over 16 on the bottom, times 1 over the square root of 2 because it's on the bottom. So we can see that the 16's also cancel out, which leaves us with the atomic packing factor as pi over 3 times the square root of 2. Now if you did not have a calculator, this is where you would stop because you really can't solve that rationally any further. So, but if, if you do have a calculator, we know that the atomic packing factor would be 0 0.74 about if you were going to two decimal places. So there you have it. Our atomic packing factor for a face-centered cubic is 0.74. The last thing we're asked for is a coordination number. Now the coordination number is the number of atoms that touch one atom. So right here I have an extended version of this cube over here. So if all the atoms on this cube, if they were full atoms instead of halves or eighths, it would look like this. So this guy is in the middle, of, would be in the middle of this guy over here. So let's pick an atom and count how many atoms touch it. So I'm picking this one. So this one, so let's count. We got one here, one here one here and one here, so that makes four, and then, okay, the next it has some behind it, so touching it on the bottom would be one here, one here, one here, and one here, so that's another four, but this continues in all directions, so there'd be some in front of it also, so there'd be one right here, one over here, one down here, and one over here also. So that's why the coordination number of a face-centered cubic is 12. And that is really hard to see if you don't have a three-dimensional model like this, but there you have it. There, they do. You can make one of these very easily if you'd like to. So now there we have it. We have done all of the activity and if you have any questions, feel free to comment. I hope this has helped you to understand the calculations involved with the unit cells. So thanks for watching.